Okay. So, Eric, it is the eve of the NFL draft. And our beloved Philadelphia Eagles have two, count them, two first-round pe- draft picks. How are they going to screw this up? Um, man, that's a good question. All right, I'm I'm resetting. All right, here we go. I'm Eric Rutan. I play guitar in Cannibal Corpse. Back in February, you finally got to road test the new Cannibal Corpse album, Violence Unimagined. From that experience, what are you guys planning on bringing to uh, to Metal and Beer Fest in June? I mean, we're definitely playing some new songs off Violence Unimagined. Um, that was our first tour, and uh, besides one show, it was like 27 months, man. So. It was great to get back on the road and kind of grease the chains. And, you know, um, man, after that tour, fantastic tour, obviously. And um, so many people came out to see us that were just dying for, for you know, for live shows and to see Cannibal Corpse live. Um, and we definitely have, you know, uh, a great set, you know, with a, a lot of the old classics and, of course, a bunch of new songs and, we're really excited to play Philly, you know, anytime for me, of course, personally, I mean, I love playing Philly. I was thinking about this before I got on, on this uh, chat with you. I was like, man, when the hell is the first time I played Philly? And, and I can't recall, but of course, one of the earliest memories of me playing Philly is at the truck in like May of 1990 opening for Morbid Angel with Ripping Corpse. You know, that's like one of the first times I remember playing G Willikers, of course, in Jersey. Um, but yeah, I was thinking, holy shit, I'm eight. That was, I was 18, you know, playing at the truck and what a, what a great experience it is. And all the shows I've played since then in Philly, um, you know, here I am 32 years later and uh, playing with Cannibal Corpse in Philly. How crazy is that? But uh, <laughs> we're really excited to play the show. And I think, I think it's going to be fantastic. Right before Cannibal performs at Metal and Beer Fest, Nuclear Assault are going to play. Mm-hmm. And they are, for the first time ever, going to play all of their 1986 classic Game Over in its oh, entirety. I, I saw that, man. Yeah. And they're, it's actually one of four full album sets that bands are doing throughout the weekend. Like Candlemass are doing all of Epicus, Dumagus, Metallicus. The Red Chord are playing all of Clients. And Wolves in the Throne Room are playing all of Two Hunters. But I'm guessing for you, for somebody of your vintage uh game over was probably a pretty pivotal record record and and actually i don't know if you knew this but we a ripping course we actually opened some shows for nuclear salt like i mean who didn't we open for uh, (laughs) we opened for everybody but um when i saw that nuclear salt was playing game over uh in its entirety i think they're right before us right Mm -hmm. yep Red chords playing clients before us, which is which is cool shit too. Um, everything that happens, it's like uh, the seventh degree of Kevin Bacon. I feel like 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 if I meet somebody, I'm like, oh man, he's buddies with this guy that I played a show with in '96, and I know this guy from back in '89. You know, like everything's connected to something. So of course, when I see Nuclear Assault, you know, playing the, you know, it just connects me to something because everything does. Because when you've been doing this as long as I have you're just connected in so many ways. And I just thought, wow, what a, what a cool experience. I would have loved to see Candlemas, but we won't unfortunately uh, be there on, on Friday night. But I think it's great that bands, you know, that you're able to get bands to play their whole records. Cause I'm sure that's, a, that's a lot of work, you know, like to refresh on, on, on a whole album worth of material and stuff like that, you know, when you, depending on how many albums you have and stuff, but, I think it's a really, really, really awesome thing. We've done a few of them over the years. Um, Like last year we had Converge doing all of Jane Doe. We had Pig Destroyer doing all of Prowler in the Yard. Napalm played a combination of songs exclusively from Harmony Corruption and Utopia Banished. Ah. Oh, in years, yeah. Obituary did all a cause of death a few years ago. It's no big deal. Oh. 
we try to we try to have fun with that and i mean it's funny like if i think about something like that for cannibal i don't even know where you would begin in your head like what would be the in your mind the full album play from cannibal corpse if you ever even entertain one you know it's tough because there's like all these different eras and iterations of cannibal corpse in my opinion you know um and I'm not speaking just about like, you know, Barnes and, and Corpse Grinder, of course. I guess you'd say, what would the word be? Quintessential albums, you know, of course, would be like The Bleeding, because I think that's just like considered pretty much a Cannibal Corpse classic, in my opinion. Just to think of how many songs we, you know, even before I was in the band, of course, played off The Bleeding at random times. You know, there's just so many great songs. Um, but man, I mean... You know, Kill would be another record that I think would be great. I feel like that was some kind of turning point for the mm-hmm. band, sense of of the direction that Kill went in, I guess. Um, two great records of many records. Those are two good calls, man. We've inducted three Cannibal Corpse records into the Hall of Fame. And Kill and The Bleeding are two of the three. There you so, go. You know, nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, I got- you know, the bleeding, I think most Cannibal Corp, you know, I mean, if you like Cannibal Corpse, you love the bleeding, right? You know, like, I mean, I, I would I would think. Um, but uh, I think yeah. if you like death metal, you have to like the bleeding. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would say, damn, what about Tomb of the Mutilated? Or, you know, I mean, uh, that would be a great record to do as well. You know, I mean, like I said, you could. You could, we could do like a tour for every record for Cannibal Corpse. You know? <laughs> and you, and you might before it's all over. We'll, we'll. See. Holy shit! <laughs> That's a lot of work on my end specifically, right? I'm a lot of songs. <laughs> it's not my first time learning. I've, you know, Jesus, the amount of songs I've learned in my career from you know Ripping Corpse to Morbid Angel to Hate Eternal and now Cannibal Corpse. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at learning too. I- so. You are now performing songs that you had a huge part of in the studio engineering. Sometimes I'm sure like bouncing ideas off of guys as the songs were coming together. Um, from some of those Cannibal Corpse records that you produce that you're now playing songs from, are you playing them? Are you playing them any differently? Are, you, are there ideas that you're still kind of bringing in now to that old material? I'd say rhythmically, no, I don't think so, you know, but of course, the songs that I produced with the guys and stuff like that, you know, like where I'm sitting right now, well, I was turned this way, but, you know, <laughs> I, I watch Pat or Rob tracking. And so, you know, we would work together on stuff during all those records. When it comes to like the solos of some of the old songs, to me, not everything always has to be note for note, you know, and like, I, you know, sometimes I'll go off on a tangent. Sometimes I stick to it, but I, I like to think that I solo wise try to keep in in a similar region, um, even with the older songs, but similar feel, maybe that would be the the right word, but I'm a different player than, than everybody and everybody's different than me. But I try to keep the spirit of, of everything from songs past, I guess, you know, it's important to me that I honor the the legacy of, of the material and certainly those songs especially from Kill to now, the ones that the records that I produced, even like as a guitar player, like what I wrote for Violence Unimagined, it's like, well, I am who I am, right? I'm gonna write a certain way on my feel, but I'm really feeling in a Cannibal Corpse way of like, man, what would be a great addition to the songs already written and, you know, try to feel how I write in a similar of like what I did with Morbid Angel when I joined Morbid is try to write songs that have my feel, but belong on a Morbid Angel record. Well, I did the same thing with Cannibal. I didn't have Cannibal Corpse. I mean, I wrote those three songs in, in only a couple months, actually. Um, when I joined, it was February of 2020, even though publicly we didn't announce it to the following year. Um, I was doing pre-pro with the guys already just thinking I was producing the record. Um, next thing you know, I'm joining the band. I'm playing on the record. I'm writing songs and lyrics and, and learning the other songs and still doing pre-pro with Paul and everybody in the studio. So things were, and then COVID hit. So it was kind of a whirlwind ever since opening for Cannibal with Hate Eternal and then me filling in for 2019. And then next thing you know, I'm doing the radio. It just kind of like 
these years went by like like nothing um just of work and learning and writing and and recording you know but uh i always have in the back of my mind you know i want to preserve and i i use, i say this all the time with production and everything it's like preserve the integrity of of what i'm doing and with cannibal corpse obviously it's important to me that i that i do so in that in that regard i think you've succeeded i can't Thanks. say i can't say i've heard a single complaint from from anyone who i know who likes cannibal who has heard um violence unimagined or has seen the band perform with you even prior to the release of the record back, I think it was the Decibel Tour in 2019 was the first run that you had with the band. Yeah, I'm still work in progress, man. You know, I, I can always be better at everything I do, man. I've been saying this for 35 years. I'm still trying to be better, uh, but um, I appreciate it. And I, I'm, I definitely feel grateful that when I think about that, I, you know, I joined Morbid Angel and, you know, I started playing with them in 93 and people embraced me then. Um, I've always felt so fortunate replacing, you know, somebody like Richard, who, you know, was an amazing guitar player. And and now to replace Pat, who's an amazing guitar player as well. Um, you know, people embrace me and I, I really appreciate I appreciate that a lot. It means a lot to me. Let's change it up a bit. We talked about the metal. Let's talk a bit about the beer. I know, like, I think you, you prefer a different kind of um, come down, relaxing <laughs> um, <laughs> but like but do you I, like beer i do yeah i do yeah. like beer i love quality beer so like you know um it it's funny that i don't drink that much um i think partially when i'm home i'm just i'm always working on something and you know like if i'm working in the studio and working on songs beer and what i do never it doesn't work together but when I come home or on a Saturday night, I'm sitting down watching boxing or watching the movie or my wife and I going out. I like I like some beer. And, you know, um, it's funny, like. I've always been like a, a basic beer guy, but then I got to say, JJ kind of opened my mind to a whole world of other beer. I just don't drink a lot of it. So it's 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 weird. I even sometimes I'm like, damn, I need I should be drinking more beer, but I guess in the grand scheme of things. I guess never good advice, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get like on tour, man, we get all this beer, you know, and I'm like, shit, man. I, you know, I like, I really should be drinking more beer, but um, I guess I like to savor the beer. My, my partying days um, are very, very minimized over mm. the last few decades, but uh, <laughs> I figure I made up for that during my teenage years. Yeah. So, for metal and beer fest cannibals beer is with three floyds which are this fantastic brewery who are a linchpin in the uh, metal and beer fest lineup every year we've done it their beer is is amber smash face have you have you tried it yet um no i've not tried it yet but i know that we have had it made um and no i haven't i haven't tried the amber smash face yet do you like hoppy stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then I think you're going to like Amber Smash. Yep. Yeah, I know you don't want to uh, indulge before a show, but we have these tiny little tasting cups that <laughs> <laughs> so we can give you. We can give you a little baby pour, and you'll be you'll be you'll be a okay for. Oh, and you're a bad influence, Albert. Man. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm going on stage. I'm be fucking everything up. Be like, yeah, yeah you're like I've that. had three ounces of beer. <laughs> I'm like, shit, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, but I, yeah, I guess, you know what, considering we're headlining, I guess I have no choice, do I? By the time we're done, the shit. Everybody's, be... all the shit's packed up. Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll have, I have no choice. Right, yeah. This question comes from our beleaguered uh, art director, Mike Wolberg, who I know you oh, yeah. know well. Oh, um, his question is, Mountain Goats featuring Eric Rutan Flexi Disc when oh man oh <laughs> uh, well you you'd have to talk to john about that one but uh i can talk to john about that one. <laughs> oh, I would, I would totally do that i would do anything with those guys those guys are they're just such great people uh and great musicians and a couple years ago like john had reached out to me and said hey do you want to come up and you know we're playing in Tampa. You want to come up and do some solos on a couple tunes, you know? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? You know? And 
and I was playing up there. It was, you know, it was sold down at, this, at the Orpheum. It was probably like 800 people or something. And the way people were screaming, I was looking out and people were hugging and they're, they're celebrating. They're so happy and meeting people after the show. And like the, the things that like the people were saying, wow, you know, like it was really amazing. And, you know, it was just such a unique experience to, uh, to come up and play with the mountain goats. Um, it was so much fun. So yeah, I would, I'm always open to anything with those guys. You know, I would do that in a heartbeat. John, if you're watching this, man, <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. He's the kind of guy that makes things happen. <laughs> the best, man. Uh, nothing but love and respect for John. He's great. So last thing, Hate Eternal. What's give us a give us an update on Hate Eternal. Well, JG and I have been, you know, working on some songs in between everything you know obviously once once i once we finished touring you know um for red before black you know at that moment i started working on the hate eternal tab book and then just started writing uh for a new hate eternal record and then you know my whole world changed there and next thing you know man i was in full-on cannibal course mode for a while obviously writing and recording the record and then preparing for tour and then um, since we had done the Hate Eternal tab book, I talked to the guys about, hey, man, we should do, you know, a tab book for Violence Unimagined. And, um, you know, with Evan Bradley and Sheet Happens publishing, you know, we we worked together with Hate Eternal and did the same thing with Cannibal. But, uh, yeah, Jane, Jane and I have been working behind the scenes on some songs. And, um, you know, with Cannibal now touring we're in full tour mode you know we're going to be doing a lot of touring for for a while so i'm just kind of um definitely plan on doing another hate eternal record for sure when um that remains to be the question but jj and i have been sending stuff back and forth and certainly crafting some stuff and uh being real picky because because i can be and then uh, <laughs> you know but i definitely Definitely look forward to doing another Hate Eternal record in the near future for sure. Twisted, criminal, on the ground. Stuck against another victim for complete control. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the interview, man. I guess of course, it's man. an interview. Whatever this was. <laughs> I, we session. I knew we'd talk about the Eagles for about 20 minutes before we did. I figured I'd get it out of the way early. Um, <laughs>